Welcome back. I'm Emer here in Ashburn Library and this evening we're going to continue reading the next two chapters of Wired Teeth by Oshi McGann. This book was published by O'Brien Press. Hope you're ready to go. Chapter 3. Making an Example of Fenton. His mother always dropped him off to school early on her way to work. This was fine with Jason because that was normally when he crammed his homework in, trading answers with his mates in the half hour before the bell rang. He didn't have any homework to do this morning. But as he walked into school with his lips tightly closed, his brain was working overtime. There was a strange tingling in his teeth, which for some reason reminded him of static on a radio. He was surprised to find he was nervous about going into the yard. Usually he was the reason other people were nervous. On an empty lot opposite the school was a huge steel phone mast that had gone up earlier in the year. Standing in its shadow, reluctant to cross the road to school, Jason remembered when the towering mast had been built. All the parents had protested against it because they said it would mess with their children's brains. The children, on the other hand, had been delighted. They thought school was already messing with their heads and this way they'd at least get a better signal on their mobile phones. That was until the thing was finished and all the kids found out the signal on their phones was worse than before. They had joined their parents in their protests and made banners and everything. That had been fun. They'd missed nearly a week of school over it. But now the tower meant he couldn't call his mum and tell her he was feeling sick and wanted to go home. Not without going into school, he would just have to bite the bullet, like John Crater always said. His class normally gathered in the same place in the yard near the door to their room, and some of them were already there. He found Finton sitting against the wall with a book open on his lap. The sap was always reading. Jason went up to him and leaned his face in close. Hey Finton, he said, loud enough for everyone to hear him. What do you think of my new braces? Finton looked up as Jason bared his teeth at him. Jason saw the corners of his mouth begin to curl into a smile and savagely grabbed him by his ears, pulling him onto his feet. What did you say? He snarled. I didn't say anything, Finton protested. You made made a crack about my braces, you little git. Say it again, or don't you have the guts to say it to my face? I didn't say a thing, Finton whined frantically. Jason saw more of his class walking up towards them and knew this was the time. He swung his knee hard into Finton's thigh, giving him a dead leg. Finton collapsed to the ground, crying. Jason took out his carton of milk, opened it and splashed some over his unwitting victim's hair. Finton would wipe the worst of it off, but in the summer heat it would be smelling before the end of the day. Jason stood over him, his fist held out. Don't you ever try it on with me or I'll kill you, you little prat, you hear me? But it didn't matter if Finton heard him. Finton had learned that lesson long ago. It was the rest of the class, everyone else who had to hear him. As he walked away, Jason heard a voice from somewhere close by, but tinny, like it was on a radio. Orange to indigo, we have the last element, the tormentor is good to go. Chapter 4. Mix Signals Making an example of Finton worked. Nobody said a thing about his braces until break time, when the five lads who made up his posse gathered around to check out Dr Shapiro's handiwork. They look serious, Finn whistled. Do they hurt? Not much, Jason said casually. Do they catch on the insides of your cheeks? Tony asked. He had train tracks, and sometimes they cut the inside of his mouth. No, Jason replied. I mean, they feel really big in my mouth, but they're not sticking out anywhere, you know. The guy said they were like future technology kind of thing. He explained how they worked by remote control. The lads were suitably impressed. Cool, said Vince. There was a crackling sound. And then, Orange, this is Indigo. Subject Alpha is engaging in social interaction with his associates. Situation, normal. What? Jason grunted. What? Vincent asked. Who said that about engaging in social, whatchamacallit? Jason retorted. What are you talking about? Roger that indigo. Orange out. Jason flinched and then looked at the questioning faces of his posse. You didn't hear that? Hear what? Tony asked, a sly smile forming on his face. Jason knew that smile and the sideways glance towards the others. He knew it because he did it often enough himself. Tony was getting ready to slag him. You don't hear that? Jason pressed him. He put his hand to his ear and then held his palm out to Tony. Here. Listen. On reflex, Tony turned his ear towards the hand to listen and Jason slapped him slightly on the face. That's the sound of you looking like an idiot. 
The other boys laughed and Jason cackled with them, but his eyes were casting fearfully around. Subjects are laughing at a practical joke. I have to go to the Jacks, Jason swore. Back in a sec. He sauntered away, trying to not look bothered, but there's no mistake in that voice he had heard. Why hadn't the other lads heard it too? He needed a bit of time on his own to think. As he strode through the door, the Singh twins were coming out. Jason gave them a sur surreptitious glance and brushed past them. Was that a surreptitious glance you just gave us, J.O.? Anita asked. And he brushed past us too, Sonia added. You're supposed to hold the door open for girls. Didn't you know that? They both gave him the same smug smile at exactly the same time. Too distracted to come up with anything smart to say, he slammed the door on them and made a face, pressing his nose against the window. Mind you don't crack the glass, Anita chirped, and then they skipped away together. Those Sing twins, he couldn't figure them out. Barging into the boys' toilets, he hurried into one of the cubicles, bolted the door and sat down on the loose seat. Something weird was going on and he didn't know what. <sighs> he let out an exasperated sigh. With nobody around, he felt safe. He stuck his finger up his nose, rooted around for a good lump and then licked the snot off his fingertip. Orange, this is Mauve. Subject Alpha has moved to the boys' toilets. He is currently picking his nose. Jason stood up with a jolt, staring around at the walls of the cubicle, up at the ceiling and down at the gap under the door. Roger that, Mauve. Keep me posted. Orange out. Who's there? He shrieked. I'll rip your flipping heads off if you're messing with me. What do you want? I just want to go to the toilet. A small child's fearful voice squeaked from the next cubicle. But I can't while you're shouting at me. His cheeks hot and flushed with embarrassment, Jason threw the door open and rushed back to the classroom.